question with. Question number eight, right honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Speaker, this question is to the Minister of Justice and asks, does she stand by all her statements regarding Aura Vita Limited because she asserts they are true? Honourable Judith Collins. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, to the best of my knowledge. If I make an error, I face up to it. I correct it and I apologise. Order, order, order. Supplementary question. Right, Honourable Winston Peters. If, if her explanation yesterday for the circuitous route to the airport, that is, she didn't know where she was, is true, then why did she say on March 4th that she just popped into Oravida to have a cup of tea on the way to the airport? And which statement is true and which one's false? Oh. Honourable Judith Collins. Mr Speaker, of course they're both correct. Um, to use the term pop in is in fact a, uh, it's, it's not a statement of fact, it's an opinion. But I can tell that member, it is a colloquialism, but I can tell that member, I tell, can tell that member that not only did I speak with CLAP in Pudong for about two hours, I also had a meeting with the uh, Shanghai Municipal Discipline yeah. Inspection Commission, uh, plus there was a lunch as well attended by many guests. Then there was a call on the Director General of Shanghai Justice Bureau, and the only other choice was to either go to the airport or go to Oravida, then the airport. And it was always planned that if, if there wasn't time, we wouldn't bother going to Oravida. Supplementary question. Order, order, order. Supplementary question, right honourable Winston Peters. How can she stand by her statement about Aura Vida? Quotes, they were not affected by the whey powder. They're the first exporters of fresh milk from New Zealand to China. And this was not affected by Fonterra, end of quotes, when close friend and Aura Vida director Julia Zhu said, just before the minister's trip to China, that, and I quote, it was having a very negative impact on Aura Vida, and that the way to fix it was the government perhaps could do a little more to engage in more bilateral talks to remove some of the tests on measures the Chinese government have put on, unquotes, and which of these two statements is true and which is false? <laughs> Honourable Judith well, Collins. Well, Mr Speaker, of course, what it does show is that I had very little knowledge of Orabita's business and I should have had more. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Supplementary question. Supplementary question, right Honourable Winston Peters. Why did she not inform the Prime Minister in her letter requesting permission to travel to China that she would visit Oravida and meet with the directors of Oravida on three separate occasions? Honourable Judith well, Mr. Collins. Mr Speaker, when I sought permission to travel, I didn't know that I would be popping in to see Oravida or meeting with them on any occasions. Supplementary question. Su order. Supplementary question, right Honourable Winston Peters. Well, that being the case, why did she, following her trip to China, Neglect to report to Cameron and the Prime Minister in her Cabinet Travel Report that she had visited Oravida, met on more than one occasion with its directors, and that she had had dinner in Beijing with, amongst other things, a senior government border and customs official. Honourable Mr. Judith Speaker, Collins. I accept that what I should have done is not to rely on the precedent set by the right honourable member Winston Peters on his travel reports, and I should have put down every single little thing. Supplementary question, struck a nerve. Supplementary question, right <laughs> Honourable Winston Peters. How can she expect New Zealanders to believe her when she is and has made so many demonstrably contradictory statements and behaved like this, Oravita's milkmaid? Order, if the... Um, Minister could address the first part of the question that's relevant. Honourable Judith Collins. Mr Speaker, I'd just say to that member that I've never lost $100,000 put into my lawyer's trust order. account like Point of order, Speaker. Point order. Order. Point of order. The wrong Mr Honourable Speaker, Winston. first of all, the Minister's answer is not on the question. The second thing is, it is going to lead to disorder because that member now knows, and so does that whole party over there, that the original allegations were deceitful and dishonest and extreme. Order. 
the difficulty I have in assisting the, the member on this occasion is the way he framed the question, particularly with his visual aid at the end, he was already leading the House into disorder. Point of question. Can I have an answer to the question? Can well, I have an answer to my I question? Will, I will allow the Minister, if she wants to add more to the answer, to do so. Otherwise, I will consider the member has, uh, Minister has answered. Honourable Judith Mr. Collins, Speaker, if she wishes to. Mr. Speaker, how can you get past $100,000? Order. Point of order, Speaker. Order. This, Speaker. Is, a, order, this is a point of order. Mr. And it Speaker, will be heard in silence. I raise with you a point of order on the first answer to that fifth question. Now, she's offended, uh, directly offended again. The offence is no more improved by the repetition, and I want you to order against her doing that. Order, and I have no intention of doing so. As I said to the member, when he... Uh, order! The member wishes to stay for the balance of question time. Order! Question number nine, Holly. Oh, point of order, the Honourable Dr. Peter Sharples. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table a copy of a letter to Te Kohanga Reo National Trust Board from Minister Parata and myself sent this afternoon. Leave us sought to table a copy of that letter. Is there any objection? There is no objection. It can be tabled. Question number nine, Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr.